Hi, I'm Mark from Triple Painting and today we are going to be doing some prep work to get ready to paint this wall. So, <clears throat> the people that own this house just bought it so there isn't any furniture to move, but the floors are in really good shape and we want to keep them that way. So, one of the first things we're going to do is put out a drop cloth to make sure that we uh, keep their floors looking good. Uh, next is just kind of take a, a look at the wall and see what all needs to be done so that uh, we can be ready for paint. So, so we pulled all the nails from where all the old pictures from the previous home were, but also they want the TV mounting bracket removed as well as the uh, wire holder. I don't know what you call that thing, but so um, also when getting ready to paint the wall. We also remove any pl wall plates that are possible and the ones that have wires connected to them. We just typically will back the screws out enough that we can get a brush in behind it so they don't get painted to the wall. Uh, so with this mounting bracket they have half inch lag screws holding it up and if it was installed correctly they are in the studs. So you can either use a ratchet or a hand driver or I'm going to use my impact drill because if they are in the studs, it's going to take a good amount of torque to get them out. So, go ahead. Much easier than a ratchet. was on there pretty good so it was pressed into the paint so a lot of times it will tear a little bit of the wallpaper or the drywall paper off. Move this uh, wire harness. It is an adhesive wire harness so we are going to, I'm going to use uh, my final one, a scraper, just to try to uh, pry it off gently to minimize the amount of damage it does. Because a lot of times when you just rip these things off, it will tear off the drywall paper and basically make a whole lot of work for yourself. So, go nice and slow is best. towards the top, but uh, we do still have this uh, glue residue on the wall here. So we're gonna try to uh, scrape off as much of that as we can. And a lot of times these, uh, these adhesives are solvent based. So usually paint thinner or uh, mineral spirits will take it off pretty cleanly. So just a real quick note, um, when you have adhesive on the wall like this, you really want to do your best to try to get it off for a couple reasons. One, if you try to, if you paint over it, it's going to leave a rough, nasty finish that's not going to look good. And two, you're probably going to have some adhesion issues that could cause the paint to fail and start to chip and flake off long before it normally would. So, uh, so sometimes it's really hard to tell what the, uh, what, adhesive or what uh, solvent will take the stuff off. I've, my first attempt was denatured alcohol and that's one of common used solvents and it didn't really do a whole lot to the uh, the glue but it did take the paint off. So you want to start in the small areas just to uh, test your products to make sure you're not doing any damage. Next up I've got a little bit of paint thinner here. It's just mineral spirits. Give that a shot and see how it 
buttons off. All right, that's working much better. So, starting to thin the glue. You're still gonna have to scrub a fair amount to get it off, but using the right uh, solvent will make the job a lot easier. Next up, we are going to remove our wall plates. And we just have this cable wire attached, and it can, they can sometimes be on there pretty good, so it helps to have a pair of pliers handy just to get it started. <clears throat> now with, with these uh, cable jacks, the wire is attached to the back of it, so we're not gonna take the entire thing off. Just loosen up the screws enough that we can uh, get a brush behind it so that uh, there are no uh, miss spots on the wall. What would happen if you pull it out too far? Uh, if, you just, if you unscrew it too far, then the screw will just come out and you can just start it. Just turn it the other way just to get it started again so it turns on. But that's all you need, and you can just get a brush in behind that, and you should be good to go. We only have one other wall plate on this wall. It's just this little plug right here. And what we typically do is we will take the plates and put them in a, one location so they don't get lost. And we'll take the screw and put it right back in because even if you uh, find a quiet corner to put them in, they st still manage to get lost quite frequently. So it won't get lost if it's in the plug where it belongs. So patching the walls, we like to use the uh, Easy Sand. Um, this is the 20 minute version. It, uh, if you mix it right proportion, you get about 20 minutes of working time before it starts to harden. And uh, you know, thin patches on the wall will dry quite rather quickly. And that too is, we just dump our into a five gallon bucket so it's a little easier to uh, carry around. So just got a little scoop in here and uh, I will portion out about what I think it will take to uh, patch this wall. bottle of water here with me so I can do this right here without having to run to the sink. So you want to add your water slowly mixing as you go so you can always add more water but you can't take it out. So just kind of mix it around in there. You're looking for a nice uh, creamy smooth texture. So we need a little bit more water. All right, that looks pretty good. That's about the, uh, the texture that we're looking for. So if you uh, touch it, it will form peaks. Nail holes over here, what I like to do is take my uh, 5 in one and just kind of push those in because when you put a nail in, it causes the, uh, the drywall to pucker up a little bit and even putting a patch over that, you'll still have a raised edge that you will be able to see after you sand it. So just kind of push it in a little bit so that when you patch it, it'll be nice and smooth and flush to the surface of the wall. where the uh, 
um, that wire bracket was because it was painted around so those those paint lines will leave a raised edge that you will be able to see through a finished coat. So we're just going to do a quick skim over that as well. All right, we got the big stuff taken care of. Now I'm just going to take a quick pass. I generally like to start at one corner and just kind of work my way all the way around the room so I don't miss anything. Just kind of looking for any uh, random damage to the wall that might need a little bit of a patch. Alright, so we've got our, all of our uh, nail holes and damage patched last night, so it's had overnight to dry, and uh, so with, especially with nail holes and things where you have an indentation in the wall, you really want to overfill it so then once it's dry you can sand it flush to the wall. I mean, if you try to just flush fill it, as it dries it will sink in and still leave a little dimple. So, so this is overfilled and dry, so we're just gonna go ahead and sand it. And you wanna go all the way around the outside to knock down that high edge, and then just a light pass over the whole thing, and that'll give you a nice smooth surface that will disappear once it's primed and painted. Moving over to this thing. So, a lot of times with really big patches and you know extensive damage, it's going to take more than one coat of mud. If you put it on too thick, it will, one, take a very long, to, long time to dry, and there's the possibility that it will crack as it dries, so you'll end up having to put another coat on anyway. So, less is more, build it up in layers, is usually the most efficient way to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and get this sanded, and we'll see what it looks like. So that's not too bad, but there's still a little bit of a raised edge here, so I think we're going to go ahead and do another light skim, and that should take care of it. And on to, this is where we had that uh, wire harness. We just did a light skim after we removed our glue. So we, it was uh, a very, very small raised edge, so it didn't take a whole lot to fill that in. I always like to run my hand over a patch after it's sanded because you can feel those little edges that will show up once it gets painted. And that feels that feels pretty good, so I think we're good with that one. All right, so we are all done sanding. So, um, and to note, uh, drywall dust is very light and will travel very far. A lot of times it's a good idea to put up plastic to kind of keep it uh, contained. So we are uh, painting this whole room so it's not as big of a concern, but we are going to clean up after ourselves. So we keep the drop cloth down, we'll vacuum up all the dust that is on the baseboard and shoe molding, and we'll fold up the drop inside of itself and take it outside and shake it out so we can keep the dust to a minimum. So with our wall, we've got all of our patches sanded and everything looks like we went ahead, I went ahead and put a second coat of mud on this big patch and got that sanded down. It's looking pretty good. So now we are going to go through and prime all our patches. And this is kind of an important step because if you do not prime your patches, you will get what we call flashing. It's like when you look down a wall against the light, you'll see it almost looks like dry spots here and there. That's because the paint will flash dry over the patches and then it will create an inconsistency with the sheen, especially if you're using an eggshell like we are. So. And for 
this, you need to just use any of your standard drywall primer will do. And we're just looking to seal those patches so that uh, we'll get an even consistent finish with our paint. If you've never used them before, these little four inch rollers are great. We use a ton of them. So when you're spot priming, you really want to be aware of your edges. So you can see how the edge is kind of broken and inconsistent. You really, that is what you're looking for because if you have a hard line or what we would call a rope, it will be visible in the finished coat. So really try to feather your edges in so that you get a nice smooth transition. So our, prime pat our patches are all dry from priming and now we're going to get into paint. Um, so just a quick note of some of the tools that we use to uh, paint the walls with. So obviously a brush. <laughs> um, Spend the extra money, get a good brush. It makes all the difference in the world. Again, our little four inch rollers, super useful, save you a lot of time. And uh, we use these, these handy pails. They got a little magnet to hold your brush in there and a little board to roll your gun, or four inch roller against. It makes a handy little uh, tool when you're uh, cutting out the walls. So, <clears throat> this is our paint. We got uh, five gallon because we're painting almost the whole well, the whole house, so we will use all of that. We've got our uh, telescoping painting pole. This is a two to four foot pole, and it just clicks it right on to our nine inch roller here. So it's good and tight. It's not going to go anywhere. So uh, this is your standard. 9 inch roller frame with a microfiber roller. We like these a lot better because it gives you a smoother, more consistent, even finish and they shed less than your conventional rollers. So a good uh, way to explain what shedding is, I got a roll of tape here and before we roll, before we put uh, paint on our roller, we always wrap them just as a, uh, the, the microfibers do shed less than the old style, but you, they do uh, still get some lint on the wall. The lint is just loose fibers in the, uh, the nap of the roller. So what we do is just wrap it with tape. As you do that, it will take off the loose fibers so that they do not stick to your wall. It gives you a, a smoother, cleaner finish. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start cutting in our walls. Um, so before you really get started, just try to work the paint into your brush and get it good and saturated so that it's, uh, having to dip your brush every two or three inches. So, uh, if, you, uh, if you need to tape it off, that's fine. Uh, just be mindful that you get your tape good and pressed down, otherwise you're gonna get bleed through and you'll have to end up having to touch up the ceiling by hand. That is why we typically will just brush cut by hand, after 15 years of painting, you can get a pretty good line. So, uh, just want to make sure you're uh, putting an even amount of paint on. You don't want to have real heavy spots, or you will start to get some drips and sags. 
and take your time. So cutting out walls is one of the most time con consuming portions of the job because we take our time to make sure we have good straight lines. Um, rolling walls goes really fast, but this is where, this is the difference between a good paint job and a great paint job. Do a thin line, we'll use our little four inch roller, and we widen our cut line so that we don't have to roll as close to the ceiling, which will minimize the risk of bumping a finished ceiling or finished trim. You want, you're working on a ladder, you want to make sure that uh, you're on a good solid surface and that your, the feet of your ladder are securely planted so there's no wobble in your ladder. Also, I like to set my ladder up with the, the rungs that I climb up facing the wall so I can use the top of the ladder as a brace so that uh, a little more secure and minimize the chance of falling. Anytime you open up a five gallon bucket and pour in, always make sure you're doing over a drop. A full five gallon bucket can be kind of heavy and a little awkward to pour. So. Just got the 
lid on with nice even pressure. No need to uh, hammer it on. So getting started, I like to just lightly tap the roller against the surface of the paint and pull it up onto the board. You don't want to stick your roller into the paint because if you get your frame covered with paint, you'll start throwing drops off all over the place. So try to keep your frame nice and clean. We'll keep your work site nice and clean. You want to just uh, go up against the board, you know, a few times, just try to work some of that paint in there. Because you don't want to uh, roll your roller dry, because then it will map down and it won't hold very much paint and it will change the appearance of the stipple as you're rolling. So when you're first getting started, you just want to do real narrow strip until you get your roller fully saturated. So I like to start, you know, just about waist level and roll up. See, that gets the majority of the paint off of the surface. Rolling up, you're not gonna splatter as much. And then from there, you just kind of evenly spread that working into your cut line. So the width that you roll per dip depends on the size of the roller. Generally, you really don't want to roll much more than one and a half times the roller width per dip on an eight foot wall. So if you have a taller wall, so you're going to make that a little bit narrower and go down to just one roller width per dip. That way you're getting good, even, heavy coat, but happen to get a, a heavy line or rope as we call it it's just a little you're pushing a little too hard and you'll get a, a heavy line off the edge of the roller so take, to get rid of that just start at the top and let the roller roll down the wall very lightly and that will even out the uh, thickness of the paint um, you will notice that I cut the wall out before I roll it so we always do it in that order. Cut the wall, then roll it. Because when in your transition between your cut and your roll, it's very common to get flashing again. So if you cut your wall first, then roll it, it minimizes that the amount that it that can flash. So all that you'll have is just a small strip around the perimeter, and that is much less noticeable than brushing over a finished roll wall. All right, so we've got our wall all rolled out. Um, this wall is gonna get a second coat because it is a color change. And anytime you're changing colors, it's probably a good idea to get to, to do two coats just so you get a, an even consistent color coverage. Uh, if you're going just the same color, just to freshen it up, one coat will probably do just fine. Uh, so basically it's, it's a case by case, wall by wall, you know, whether you need one or two coats. So, um, and if you're going to uh, reuse your roller at any point, good way to get uh, cleaning that started is if you have a five-in-one, you see this little, little curved edge on here. This is for scraping paint out of your roller. So you just put that in there and just slide it down and it basically just squeegees out all the paint. So after you've gone all the way around like that, that will get a majority of the paint out. And to wash it, just use warm water. Uh, it's, it's gonna take a, a little while to get all of the paint out, but um, warm water is best. I would really not recommend using soap because 
If you do use soap and you don't get it all the way out, every, all of the soap out of the roller, it can um, mix in with the paint the next time you use it and it will cause adhesion issues. So just be careful about using soap when washing out rollers and brushes. And you wanna use just warm water, not hot. And using hot water will soften the glue that holds the bristles of a brush or the, the fibers of the roller, and you can start to shed, lose the, the fibers of the roller or the bristles of the brush. This has been Mark with Triple Painting. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and found it useful. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, or TriplePainting.com. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you.